In Creo Parametric, you can incorporate splits into your draft feature so that you can have the taper going in different directions on the sides of your parting surface. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I have a part. I want to create a draft feature. So, so I will click on the command in the ribbon and I want to draft all the vertical sides around here. I can pick them one by one using the control key, but I'm going to tap the right mouse button until I get the intent references highlighting. So here it has the intent surfaces belonging to a protrusion. With them highlighted, I'm going to left click to select them and it grabs all those different surfaces. You'll notice that the rounds on the corners aren't selected because they are not part of the protrusion, but that's okay. I'm going to open up the references tab. Here you can see that the intent surfaces are in the draft surfaces. Now for the draft hinge, I can click inside of here, or you can use right mouse button functionality to activate the draft hinges collector. And first I'm gonna use the top surface of the model. And it's also using that top surface as the pull direction. That's fine. Let's go to the split tab. Right now we're not using any split. I'm gonna use the drag handle to make a big amount of draft over here. Uh, let's not have those cylinders run into each other. I will use four degrees of draft and you'll notice that the rounds are getting drafted even though I hadn't selected them as the draft surfaces. That's because there is a setting turned on to propagate along tangent surfaces. And of course, those round surfaces are tangent. Let's hit the check mark. And there you can see a preview of the feature. Again, this time I did not use any draft. Let's say that my parting line was in the middle of the part. The way that I create this part is that I used a symmetric depth. And that way I have the datum plane called top right there in the middle. So reduce my screen clutter. Let's hide a couple of our other datum planes real quickly. So now I will edit definition of the draft feature. I'll click on the feature in the model tree and then use the edit definition command from the mini toolbar. You'll also see from the tooltip that it is the keyboard shortcut of control E. And I'm using the same draft surfaces as before, but I'm going to change my draft hinge. Instead of using that top surface that's highlighted in green, I'm going to select the datum plane called top. And right now we still have four degrees of draft. You'll notice that because we're using this as the draft hinge, that it's actually more to the inside of the original part line at the top. So where you have your draft hinge makes a difference. Now let's go to the split tab. And from the drop down list over here, I can choose that I want to split by the draft hinge. And now you'll notice I have an additional drag handle. I can use this drag handle to have some draft angle up at the top and I can have a different draft angle down at the bottom. So let's change this. I'll use four degrees down at the bottom. And what you'll notice in this particular case, up at the top, I'm using so much draft that the round feature is collapsing in on itself at the corners. In this particular case, I have another setting that I can use right on the ribbon. I can disable round surfaces in line. And when I click on that, you'll notice that the round surfaces are highlighting in, or they are changed their color to gray, and they're not necking in as the draft feature is operating on them. Let's hit the check mark to take a look at that. And so there we have our draft feature being created. You can see that the rounds are essentially constant width throughout over here. Let me turn off my datum plane visibility for a moment so that we can investigate some of the other different options of the draft feature. Once again, I will click on it with the left mouse button and then use the edit definition command from the mini toolbar. Let's go back to the splits tab. The default option for the sides is that it is going to draft the sides independently. That's why I have different draft angles on both sides nine degrees on the upper portion, four degrees on the lower portion. With this option, draft sides dependently, now we're only going to have one drag handle 
and we get the same draft on both sides of the parting line in this particular case. Let's use that 7 degrees and hit the check mark real quick. And there you see the end result. Once again, let's edit definition and go to the split tab. And from the side options drop down list, we can choose to draft the first side only. And you'll notice that the bottom now is vertical. We only get draft on one side. And one more choice. Let's edit definition again and go to the split tab and change to draft the second side only. And so that way the top portion is vertical and the bottom side is drafted. And again, we can change the draft angle that we're using over here. Let me use a value of 10 and hit the check mark. And in that way, we have our draft just created on one side of our draft hinge, which in this case, again, would represent sort of our parting line that we are using. There are other additional choices that you can use for your split. And for the first one, I'm going to unhide a sketch I have in my model. And this sketch is just an arc that's created on one side of the part. Once again, I will left click on the draft feature in the model tree and then edit definition from the mini toolbar. Let's go to the splits tab, and this time instead of splitting by the draft hinge, you can also split by a split object. And if I go to the all tab over here, or excuse me, the filter in the lower right hand corner of the screen, you'll see that you have choices of quilt, feature, or sketch. I will show you a sketch first. Let's use this sketch as our split object. You notice the collector was active over there. And right now it's drafting only the second side. Let's draft the sides independently so we have different drag handles. And this way you can see that I can drag this inside over here. Let me choose to turn off that disable option. And you can see the end result that we're getting. Let me reduce this a little bit over here. And so, again, we are splitting by the split object, but here I'm using this arc shape, and so we end up with a little bit of an interesting odd result in terms of where we are defining our split. This time I'm going to edit definition of the draft, and instead, actually, let me cancel out of here real quick. I want to show a surface that I have created through here, which is just a sketch of a bunch of straight lines. And then the uh, sketch is extruded in order to create a surface or a quilt. Let's edit definition of the draft feature. And once again, go to the split tab. We are still splitting by the split object, but instead of using that sketch, I'm going to use this quilt over here. And again, we are drafting the sides independently. You can choose to draft the first side or the second side only. But again, by using this particular surface as my draft reference, we're going to end up with a much different result. Let me use a big angle, like 10 degrees down at the bottom. And at the top, let's use about 5 degrees. And this time, I'll just double click on the number in order to change it. Now hit the check mark in order to complete the feature. Let me hide the split surface. And so there you can see quite an odd result that we would have in here by using that particular surface as our split for diff having different angles on one side and the other side of our parting surface. So there you see the different options that you have for split using the draft feature. You could have either no split, or you could have split by the draft hinge, or you could have splitting by a split object. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.